If I had to pick one trait for children to develop that will help them for their entire lives, this would be one of my top picks. My name is Maria George, and in my channel, I apply child development concepts to help you understand them better so you can apply these concepts to your life or the life of a child. In this video, I'm going to talk about resilience, what it is, why it's important, and how to help children develop this trait. What do you think of when you hear the word resilience? If someone is resilient, what are they like? The first thing I think of when it comes to resilience is the ability to bounce back after a difficult situation. Actually, it's more than bouncing back. It's about bouncing forward because after a challenging situation, we should be stronger than before, not the same. Or finding the strength to persevere and keep going when things do not seem to be going your way. If someone is resilient, I see them as having inner strength to cope with stress and adversities. So how can one child who has gone through terrible abuse overcome their situation to become a dedicated teacher to inspire students while another child who falls off their bike once decides they're never going to bike again and they don't? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Different factors and situations shape children and we can definitely teach children resilience. Here are six strategies. First, be a source of strong support or help the child find someone who can help. Children need at least one strong person who can be their social support, whether it's a parent, another family member, teacher, or another person who can support, encourage, or be a role model. Two, let your child do things on their own. Being able to do things for themselves will help children develop self-efficacy. Let your child pour their own orange juice or sew the hole in their shirt. I mean, make sure that it's age appropriate and teach them how to do things, but then let them figure things out. But don't interfere unless they may hurt themselves or others. But you say, they may fail. That leads me to point three, let the child fail. This one sounds mean, but let me explain. Let's go back to the definition of resilience. It's the ability to overcome adversity and stress. If you protect your child from all failure risk and being uncomfortable, when are they gonna be able to develop resilience? Resilience is like a muscle that must be exercised to be stronger. It's better for children to start building that muscle when they are young and have you to help them. Allow for situations where the, if the child fails, he can learn from it. An example is to play board games or sports, and if the child loses or doesn't do well, turn it into a teachable moment to let the child know it's okay to lose. Let them talk through their feelings and ask them what they learned from the situation and how they can do better. Teach them that failure is part of life and is not the end of the world. In fact, it may be a good teacher. What are your thoughts about failure being a way to teach? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're getting value out of this video, please hit that like button. Okay, onward to number four. Help children manage their emotions. Children may feel strong emotions, which may or may not be valid. However, how they respond is important in their emotional management. For example, if a child takes a toy car from another child, that child who had the car in the first place may be mad. And that's okay. It's okay to be mad when someone takes your stuff. I would be. However, if the child punches the other child or calls them a stupid doo-doo head, that's not okay. Talk to the child about their feelings. Tell them it's okay to be mad, then help them think about what they can do next. If the child projects strong emotions such as screaming, throwing a tantrum, or other inappropriate outlets, the worst thing to do is to give them what they want. This practice will only reinforce their behavior and not promote resilience at all. Number five, teach children to problem solve. Let your children figure things out. Don't solve or decide everything for them. Let's say your child is nervous about auditioning to play the flute for their middle school orchestra. So they change their mind about joining. I would advise against allowing them to quit before they even start or just telling them, hey, you'll be fine. They may be fine, but talk to your child about their feelings and then brainstorm strategies that will help them be less nervous, such as practicing more or practicing specific skills that they may feel weak about or even what they can do if they don't get in or get the position they want. And the sixth strategy, model resilience. As a social support, your child will look up to you. They will learn from you as you directly teach them to manage their emotions, but they will also learn from observing you. 
If you tell them to remain calm and they observe you yelling at the driver on the road who cut you off, they're going to be confused as to how to act appropriately when they are angry. So display consistent calmness. And if you mess up, admit your failures and apologize. They will see this too and be able to own their mistakes. Another important trait to have. Let me know in the comments below if any of these strategies have helped you or if you have any other suggestions to help build resilience in children. Let's build a community where we can learn from one another. Know that resilient children become resilient adults who are able to deal with life stresses and adversities. Resilience will help children and adults bounce back stronger so we can survive and overcome whatever life will throw at us. If you would like to learn more about other topics in child development, watch these other videos. And if this video helped you, please hit the like button. Then subscribe for future content on applying child development concepts. And want to know how to encourage your child? Watch this video here. And thank you for watching.